Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about something I feel is important that we talk about and get different look at it from different dimensions and so we can have proper understanding. Um, every generation talks about it. Everybody, whatever age, um, age bracket talks about it. And it's simply, if money can't buy happiness, um, then what can? Or does money truly buy happiness? You know, people talk about it and they just, um, we discuss it, but we haven't really um, taken proper or not really sought proper understanding um, about this concept. I will start with instant gratification and delayed gratification. We all want instant gratification. We all want it now. If we can have it, we just want it now. And it's just a human, is a human, um, is is human nature really. Um, yes, it's it's it, instant gratification leads to selfishness. Is what breeds selfishness. But is is a human is a human survival mechanism to want it now and keep it now. Get all you can, can all you get, and sit on the can. That is the human, that's just the human uh, way of, of doing things, and it leads to selfishness. But you can't, you can't take it away. It, it gives you confidence for the future, kind of. So that's why um, uh, everybody goes for that. Um, instant gratification and not delayed gratification. Um, so, but now we ask, does money, can money buy happiness? A lot has been researched, a lot has been researched in this field and I just want to bring some of them to you and um, you realize that some of the studies that, um, there's this National Academy of Sciences in the U.S. They did a study. I'm going to talk about what the the study they came out with uh, or their findings. But but really, it's it talks about release. People get excited for something. Um, when you get excited about something, um, it releases this dopamine into our system. And so we are excited to get something because we have that dopamine within us. Um, and when you taste of that or you feel that dopamine within you, what happens is that you become, you can become addicted to it. You can become addicted. So now what you really want becomes secondary. I want money. I want to get money. And now you get money. And you realize that it's not as exciting as you thought because the quest for money is usually more exciting than money itself. People get that money, but they don't know what to do with money. And most of the time, that money goes, develops, develops wings and it flies away because money in itself has its own, it has its own dynamics uh, that you need to understand. If not, that money will go. So I want to be rich and you are excited about it. You are fired up about it. And you know, and this, you are excited when you think about it and that pushes you on and on and that dopamine helps you. So this is what the old saying, money can buy you happiness means because you are excited when you get that, uh, where you're excited when you get it, but when you, uh, before you get it, but when you get it, it is no longer as exciting as you think it is. You want to, you look for something else. You get 10 million, you're excited for 50. You take, get another 50 million, you're excited. It never ends. Some people have in this, in this, our climb in Africa, in my country, people have stolen a lot of money and you have stolen $60 billion and still you want more because it is, why would you want more when all your generations um, 
are, are comfortable, are going to be comfortable with that kind of money. But it is the chase, is the excitement that keeps and the security that, that, that the future is secured or the thoughts that the future is secured make people do those kind of things. So they are, they are driven, there's an internal, there's, they are driven by that, that internal excitement to, to make sure they don't get to that particular place that when they get there, they really don't know what, uh, what, what to do at that particular time. Then abuse of funds begin to come, or abuse of power begins to come. There was a study that was um, done a couple of years back about um, um, serial, serial, um, serial or chronic um, playboys or serial or chronic womanizers, as you will, as the case may be. And a study was done, it was for like 10 years, their brain was, 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 their brain was, was um, studied and the excitement and how their mind were interviewed. And over close to 90% of them, it's, they realized it's an addiction. They were addiction, addicted to the chase than actually the accomplishment of their goals. And by the time all of them were asked at the accomplishment of their goals, they said it was still, it was the same thing. There was nothing different. So now what drives them, what drives them is, is the chase. What drives them is the thought that I can accomplish this. So now it got to a level they realized that it's the same level when the mind of someone that is a, a, a chronic womanizer and a chronic playboy, the brain, their brain is the is it was similar to that of someone that was on drugs. So they react the same way because they are addicted to something. So that feeling that drugs gives you, you are chasing, you are chasing. The people addicted to drugs are chasing that feeling, especially the feeling of the first time they took drugs. They say ah, well, they are chasing that eyes. They are chasing that feeling. So they keep chasing that feeling and they will never get it again. And so they are addicted to it. Same thing with this, the brain of those people, uh, they are addicted. It is an addiction. It is a habit that has gone overboard. And so they get excited, but at the end of the day, they are realizing, why did I do this? I didn't have to do it. For those of them that were married, I didn't have to do it because my wife is better than this person. But it's not about, it's not because you, are, you don't get what you want at home. It's because it's an addiction. And if you can agree with me, um, that is a sickness. Somebody addicted to drugs is uh, is sickness then in the same way i'm not a medical expert so i can't uh, bring about this uh, um, hypothesis but i i believe um that this will also be studied because i think it's also um, a sickness as well is that is an ailment because they cannot stop not because they have not had enough for two or three lifetimes but because that addiction is there and it needs to be studied. So now, can it really make you happy? Having more women, does it really make you happy? It doesn't at the end of the day, but the, 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 the excitement towards it is what? So now, that thing you say you want, is that thing you say you want, does it really make you happy? It doesn't truly bring about happiness. That's where that thought of, um, does it really bring happiness comes into play it doesn't really give you happiness so now national this national academy of sciences in the u.s did this survey they brought two groups and they gave them 40 dollars each group a was to take that 40 dollars and go and buy whatever they wanted um they were excited group b was to take that money and buy something to spend it in ways that will enable them to have free time. So the second group was to buy, to put that money into something that can help them 
have free time. Something like cleaning. You give $40 to someone that can clean your house so that you can have more time to stay with your family or something else. Um, you, can, you can get that money, uh, give that money to a babysitter so that you can have so you can you can spend time with your spouse so at the end of the day um the people that went to do the shopping they did that shopping but a few minutes an hour after that they they were not so they didn't feel so great about spending the 40 dollars but the people that used it to buy time even though they wanted they would have loved to spend it on something an item but at the end of the day, they were more satisfied and happy because they now had free time to do things that they couldn't do for a long time. So just look at this analogy. Everybody is the same thing happens with um, chronic um, shoppers. There are people that shop is also, for me, I think is a, is a serious addiction. Is a negative habit because some people have to buy things every day. There are people that are that are always buying, and I've seen it. I've seen documentaries on that that it can also be seen as an addiction. So there has to be um, a play where we draw the line. And if you don't understand that money does not really like buy that happiness, that sometimes it is it is it is what 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 happens before you get that thing that you set out for is what is driving you and not really that thing. And because when you get that thing, you realize that it's still the same thing. A chronic shopper goes to buy the same clothes. I watched um, uh, um, a documentary, Hodas and some other stuff, um, series close to it. A woman goes out every day to buy and she has over, she can have shoes she has 30 pairs of shoes that are the same thing the same color the same size she didn't even know until they had to bring out everything she had so now she's buying the same thing over and over again because she has this addiction so when she buys she brings it she's not satisfied so her husband has the money and she's buying and buying and every item now becomes the same thing. After a few minutes after buying them, she has that, she's under that, she has that compulsion to go back and buy more. So does money really bring happiness? She's only happy when she's on the way to the shops. She's not happy after buying. So where does it now really buy and cause happiness and this research of those two groups they were happier when they had free time to do other things but over 80 percent of them would have preferred give them the money uh, prefer the option of buying things so ladies and gentlemen i conclude with this what's your motive for what you want you are addicted to the motive you are addicted to the dopamine that flows in your system when you think about those things. Most of the time, it's not what you think you want that is, you, that is the problem. You want money so you can do certain things. But don't do anything that those things will become control your life. I, I left some certain addictions because I, I did not want something to control my life i didn't want something to control my life and one day i said no i want to if i'm going to do good let it be that i chose it was my choice um if i want to do bad it was my choice not because i have this external feeling external feeling that is compelling me to do those things and it helped me that thought alone helped me drop a lot of things and when I think about it, I said, this will not bring me happiness in the long run. And see, if you want to be happy, do something for someone else. I recommend it for you. You want to be happy, do something for someone that cannot pay you back. It, it has this internal feeling of joy, fulfillment 
happiness, everything inside of you for helping someone. It's God that put it that way. It's not us. And so it, it is something that people have felt for generations past and generations to come. If you want to be truly happy, become selfless. Do things for people. You are happier, you smile more, you feel good with yourself when you do something for someone, especially people that cannot pay you back. So what's your motive? It's not that thing you say you want that is driving you. It is those things that excite you to want that thing. It is that state of mind that you have before you get that thing. That is the problem. And that's when we say money doesn't buy you happiness. This is exactly what we mean by that. Ponder on this. Think about it because it has led a lot of people astray. Until I come again, um, you guys take care. I will be coming um, on a regular basis for one topic or the other. So you guys take care. See you soon.